Chuck Electric Power Company has detected high levels of radioactive materials in the spent fuel pool for the number three reactor at the Fukushima Daiichi. TEPCO examined the water sample from the pool on Sunday. It contained 140,000 becquerels of radioactive cesium-134 per cubic centimeter, 150,000 becquerels of cesium-137, and 11,000 becquerels of iodine-131. The radioactive iodine is leading TEPCO to believe these substances may have come from damaged fuel rods in the reactor rather than the damaged spent fuel rods in the pool. Iodine-131 is generated during nuclear fission inside a reactor. The substance has a short half-life. The utility says the radioactive substances may have become attached to debris and enter the spent fuel pool together. None of these substances was detected during an inspection on March 2nd before the accident triggered, before the accident triggered by the March 11th disaster. The operator of the troubled Fukushima nuclear plant announced last month a planned schedule to bring the accident under control. But the utility is now facing a setback due to high radiation levels in reactor buildings. TEPCO announced the plan on April 17th, detailing 51 measures to be implemented over the next three months for the first stage. The most important steps involve the cooling of the reactors. These include pumping water into the reactors, injecting nitrogen into the containment vessels to prevent a hydrogen blast, and filling them with water. The company is also considering installing heat exchangers. Workers have entered the number one reactor building to make preparations for injecting water into the containment vessel. On Tuesday, they began calibrating the water cages. But high levels of radiation have been detected inside the number one building, and experts say it may force TEPCO to change its work plan. In addition, none of these measures have been carried out at the three other reactors, apart from pumping water into them. I've taken the liberty of anticipating your condition, and I've brought you orange juice, coffee, and aspirins, or do you need to throw up? At the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant, workers have again entered the number one reactor building and have begun fixing gauges, an essential step for restarting the cooling system. On Tuesday morning, nine workers began the process of fixing the gauges. Now this has to be done before the reactor's containment vessel can be filled with water. Tokyo Electric Power Company says it hopes it can determine the level of water inside the containment vessel so it can go ahead with plans to fill it with water. The utility installed lead-based radiation-proof mats inside the building. After an inspection on Monday, detected radiation levels of 7 to 12 millisieverts per hour nearby. However, TEPCO says the mats have only reduced radiation levels by about 10 percent, and it must come up with ways to protect workers from overexposure. The utility also says the temperature of the plant's number three reactor has been rising this month, and that its efforts to cool the reactor by pumping water into it may not be sufficient. You must stop worrying. TEPCO says it is installing new pipes to the reactor in hopes to start pumping water through them on Thursday. The mayor of Fukushima City has a great uh, demand from parents and teachers to have radiation contaminated topsoil removed from schoolyards. Outdoor radiation levels temporarily exceeded safety limits last month at 10 kindergartens, nurseries and elementary and junior high schools in the city. The Municipal Board of Education says most elementary schools continue to have students play and study indoors. On Tuesday, members of the Federal Federation of Local Parent Teacher Associations met with Mayor Takanori Seto. The PTAs requested that surface soil be removed from schoolyards to prevent children's exposure to radiation. They also demanded a briefing for concerned parents by municipal officials and radiation experts. Mayor Seto said the city will start removing soil from the schoolyards as soon as it decides on the most effective method. <laughs> What's so funny now? I sometimes just think funny things. Officials from Japan's Trade and Industry Ministry are visiting Russia's Far East to explain that products from Japan are safe. 
As problems continue at the Fukushima Daiichi plant, minute levels of radiation have been detected on used cars exported from Japan to Russia. Trade ministry officials in charge of Russian affairs visited Vladivostok and met with the vice provincial governor on Tuesday. They presented a Russian translation of TEPCO's plan to manage the crisis. They also explained that the Japanese government is working all out to help stabilize the troubled plant. The Japanese officials also noted that radiation checks are being tightened on Japanese products slated for export. I have explained in detail the measures we are taking. I believe we gained the understanding of the Russian side. The Japanese government has held a seminar in Taipei to ease Taiwanese concerns about the safety of Japanese food in the wake of the nuclear accident in Fukushima. Japan's Interchange Association invited Taiwanese companies and media to the event on Tuesday. Japanese officials told the participants that the food in the supply chain does not contain levels of radioactive substances that exceed the official limits. They also explained Japan's ongoing efforts to bring the nuclear accident under control. It was a relief to hear that Japanese seafood is safe. <laughs> And just think funny things. <laughs> Taiwan began radiation checks of imported Japanese food after the nuclear accident. In a related move, senior officials of the Japan Tourism Agency will hold another seminar in Taiwan on Thursday to stress that Japan is a safe country to visit. The president of Tokyo Electric Power Company, or TEPCO, has asked the government for financial help in paying compensation over the accident at its nuclear plant in Fukushima. TEPCO President Masataka Shimizu handed a letter of request to Chief Cabinet Secretary Yukio Edano and Economy, Trade and Industry Minister Banri Kayeda on Tuesday. According to the letter in the current business year, TEPCO expects to spend an extra 1 trillion yen, or about $12.5 billion for thermal power generation, and $9.3 billion to redeem its bonds and repay debts. The utility says it's afraid that the expenses will make it hard to offer just and speedy compensation while maintaining stable power supplies. TEPCO also says its chairman, president and other board members will decline their salaries and bonuses for the time being. It says it will sell securities, property and other assets to raise as much funds as possible and restructure its management. Industry Minister Kayeda told reporters that the government aims to decide how to help TEPCO financially within this week. Compensation payments should not be reflected in immediate changes in electricity prices. Also, the financial burden of the government should be minimized. Japanese nuclear scientists are calling for the creation of a single professional nuclear watchdog similar to the Nuclear Regulatory Commission in the United States. Fifteen scientists at the Atomic Energy Society of Japan analyzed the accident at the Fukushima Daiichi nuclear plant. In their report, the scientists warned that existing contingency plans do not fully address disasters such as tsunamis, which are less frequent but have a far-reaching impact. They also say the existence of, uh, uh, they say the existence of a number of supervising bodies made responsibilities unclear and hampered smooth communication in the wake of the accident. The report calls for a unified command structure and for a review of the roles of the Nuclear Safety Commission, the Industry Minister's Nuclear and Industrial Safety Agency, and the Science Ministry. The scientists also recommend reviewing the presumed scale of tsunami that a nuclear plant could face. They say the plants should be equipped with heavy machinery to remove debris along with devices to protect key safety instruments. University of Tokyo professor Koji Okamoto, who has involved, who's involved in the analysis, says he hopes the lessons learned in Fukushima can be shared at more than 400 reactors across the world.
One lesson we have learned from the events at Fukushima is that we need to presume that accidents will happen. We need to take necessary measures to make the world's nuclear plants safer. Thank you for a memorable afternoon. Usually one must go to a bowling alley to meet a woman of your stature. Governors of two Japanese prefectures, Shimane and Saga, say they need more information from the government before they can give the go-ahead for nuclear power plants in their prefectures to be restarted. The governors were responding to a statement on Tuesday by Industry Minister Bandi Kaeda, who said that apart from the Hamaoka plant in Shizuoka prefecture, there is nothing to stop other nuclear plants in Japan from continuing or resuming their operations. Shimani Governor Zambi, Zambi Mizoguchi expressed his position at the prefectural assembly. I cannot yet decide whether or not to restart operations in the city of Matsue. There are various issues I need to confirm. Mizoguchi said he must first hold talks with the central government about a range of issues relating to nuclear plants, including the damaged Fukushima Daiichi plant, as well as projected power supply and demand. In Saga Prefecture, two reactors at the Gankai power plant were shut down for a scheduled inspection, and they were not restarted following the accident at the Fukushima plant. We haven't heard how the government is assessing its emergency safety measures. I cannot authorize restarting the two reactors at the Gankai power plant. I mean, I accidentally did that. Dave, you have a disease. Would you apologize if you were a diabetic? Of course not. So why do you feel you have to apologize because you're suffering from TAS? Um, TAS? Toxic Anger Syndrome. The UN-sponsored conference on disaster preparedness has opened in Geneva, taking up the nuclear accident in Japan as its main topic. Some 2,700 government officials and delegates from about 170 nations are taking part in the four-day meeting starting on Tuesday. UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon addressed the plenary session and called for tighter safety standards at nuclear power stations to better protect citizens. The tragedy at Japan's Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant has raised questions about the future of nuclear energy and fueled public fears. A civic group representative said some nuclear reactors are ill-prepared for earthquakes and tsunami. Many participants call for stronger measures to contain damage at nuclear plants. A Japanese government official said the country will share its analysis of the Fukushima nuclear accident with other nations so that they could use the information for disaster prevention measures. You tie this up tight. Away goes the gym. I'm so handsome.